So in part of part three of the induction motor, rotating magnetic field was continue going to be discussed. So today I will also give the some idea about the rotating magnetic field. So let's suppose this is our three phase system and current flowing in this is IA, IB and IC. So three time intervals are given here T1, T2, T3 and T4, four times interval are here. So at this time T1, the current flowing in phase A is positive and phase D and phase C both are negative here. It can be very easily seen at time T1, the current in phase A is positive peak and here in phase B and C, it is half of the negative peak. Same in case of time T2, the current flowing in phase A and phase B is positive, but peak is half here and for phase C, it is a negative with peak value. Like that in T3, the current is uh, uh, and B is peak with, uh, with positive value and in phase A and phase C has a negative value with half of the P. This can be also be visualized by considering this time interval here. The same thing is depicted here for T1, IA greater than zero, IA is greater than zero and IB and IC both are less than zero. That is here this axis and this axis the value of I, B and IC both are negative. Same thing is explained here at time T4, we can also see that at time T4, the value of current IA is less than zero, means negative value. So here the red line is on the negative axis, so it is less than zero. And at this time, B and C both are positive. So it is shown here. So same thing is applied here to find the how the resultant MMF is set up in the so this is uh, our phase uh, phase A and in phase A the direction of uh, current is visualized here A and A, A prime. A prime means uh, current is this A prime is means current is outside the paper and in uh, cross it is inside. So inside this is current going here inside and here it is coming outside. So in this way, here, if I draw a line like this, so this axis is drawn perpendicular to this line. So this is called phase A axis is drawn here. Same way for phase B, we can also draw phase B. This is phase B and this portion is again our uh, inside the page and this is outside the page. So phase B, we can also draw and phase C, we can also draw. So this is, uh, this can very easily be seen here that phase flux B, here flux B, we can see here the flux B is uh, shown here. If I draw a line here from B to B dash, it is also one uh, perpendicular to this line. Same way for C to C, uh, if we draw a line here for phase C, then the flux will be coming along this axis that is it is shown here so c is there so the b and c resultant this is the half of the magnitude as compared to the a because in a here during this time interval the magnitude of current is the highest and the b and c magnitude is the half here this magnitude b and c magnitude is here that is the half so half is shown here and uh, uh, th this is also half and this is full. So the resultant of these three vector will be along this axis, which is given here. This is the called the resultant flux of, uh, produced by these three phases at the instant of time T1. Similar we can draw for the time T2 and T3. So for T2, it is uh, drawn like this. We can draw for T2 also. And similarly for T3, T4, we can also draw that can be uh, shown in a, a line here the resultant flux is flowing in this direction and here it is in c direction because the maximum magnitude of the uh, at during the time t2 uh, during the time t2 here the maximum value of the uh, 
uh, current is in the phase C, that is the maximum value. And in the phase of A and B, it is the half of the its maximum value. That if its maximum value is IB here, it is half of the IB here. And IA maximum value is here, so it is half of IA here. That is why it is shown here, uh, phi A, phi B, and it is a, phi C has the double magnitude of this line. Now, by adding all these three vectors, we get the result. So this uh, portion is now for T1, T2, T3, uh, T4 is drawn here. That can be very easily explained on the basis of the previous uh, uh, slide, whatever I have discussed. So T1, T2, T3, and T4. Now the flux direction is like this. And here it is resultant in this direction. Here it is resultant in this direction from T1. T2, T3, T4, it is shown here and it can be seen here that from here to here it is a one complete cycle. So this is called a one by F, this is called time period and opposite of time period is called frequency. This all thing is, this can be very easily seen here. This uh, 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 formula already given in part uh, uh, three of the video and this is also explained in part three. This up to here we have seen in part three that uh, frequency or the synchronous speed is 120f by p. Now I am going to uh, uh, discuss here one more important part is that uh, when three phase balance currents are applied to three phase winding A, A dash, B, B dash and C, C dash this place. This is A, A, A dash, B, B dash. Dash means this is the dot, dot means outside and cross means inside the current flowing is inside here current is outside and we can very easily see that the there is a 120 degree difference between each phase a a dash b b dash this angle is 120 degree electrical degree in a space a rotating magnetic field is produced this is the basic condition to what should be the condition to produce rotating magnetic field so first condition is that each phase phase uh, three uh, balance three phase winding A, A dash, B, B dash, C, C dash displaced from each other by 120 electrical degree in a space, a rotating magnetic field is produced and the rotating magnetic field uh, runs at a, a speed. This is speed is called synchronous speed. The speed at which the magnetic flux rotates is called synchronous speed, NS, and uh, in a radian per second, uh, its value is 4 pi f already derived in uh, part 3 of the video. f is the free supply frequency, p is the total number of poles. And here also we, uh, we have seen that the maximum value, uh, maximum value of each phase is uh, reached. Suppose here the maximum value of each phase, I'm just uh, coming here. For this point, if we say here, if I write here maximum value, it's maximum value I A equal to I M at omega T equal to zero. If omega T equal to zero, then I A equal to I M. And here I B will be how much? I B if omega T equal to zero, say then I M cos minus 120, it will be minus I M by two. And again, if it is uh, omega t equal to 0, then ic will be equal to minus im by 2. So we can see very easily that uh, whatever I have already drawn, shown through the uh, graph uh, in early figure like this three phase drawn. At this time, when omega t equal to 0, t1 equal to, t1 is considered. So at this time, ia is the maximum value and ib and ic uh, both are half of this maximum value but with negative sign also. That is already given in uh, previous slides. So now total magnetomotive force uh, uh, along a special position is therefore total magnetomotive force MMF is FA plus FV plus FC. And theta is the meaning is here that suppose our one phase is here and it's may, uh, another phase is uh, 120 degree. I'm just putting here and the another one is also 120 degree here. Suppose I am measuring this uh, from this axis and this and this phase A and B and C, this is making an angle theta with this axis. 
so what will be the angle for this this is 120 and this is uh, theta and this is again 120 and this angle is uh, i'm taking some other color so that i can show it very well i'm going to take in another color so that we can show it very clear so this angle is also 120 so this position suppose this is a, a rotating this is this its field is also rotating and it's also rotating field is rotating so the uh, angle now uh, the theta term here is also included uh, to calculate the mmf mmf is nothing but it is the number of term multiplied by current that is called mmf now this uh, for phase a phase a current is ia but it is not only omega t uh, uh, is uh, here but theta will be also included here but due to this if this axis matches with this axis then theta becomes zero but a special case is taken it says it is not matching with the uh, this axis so this angle theta is taken here that is why it is shown here so n a i a cos omega t so it is i a cos omega t and uh, for phase b uh, it is n multiplied by current into cos theta minus 120 degree is here and for phase c and c cos theta minus 240 is here so now i am going to add all these three to get the resultant mmf and i have also to substitute the value of ia ia is nothing but it is im cosine omega t and ib is how much im cosine omega t minus 120 and ic is im cosine omega t minus 240 so we are just uh, adding all these values uh, in the equation so here omega t ia is placed here so ia cos omega t and cos theta here similarly for ib this value is placed and now a special uh, this value theta minus 120 degree and after solving all these three equations using the relation this relation cos a plus cos b is how much cos a plus cos using the relation cos a plus cos cos a into cos b 1 by 2 cos a minus b plus half cos a minus b using this relation we get this uh, after breaking final equation we are what were final we are getting this is called our resultant mmf this is very special thing uh, note the change the phase sequence and determine the fmf now if we can uh, note that here you can also do we can change the phase sequence phase sequence means say, this is suppose i have calculated this for a b c this is phase sequence is taken as clockwise here this is clockwise a c b is phase sequence here and if uh, we change phase sequence here a b c so by changing the uh, phase sequence we need to calculate by changing the phase sequence what will happen the value of uh, uh, this uh, uh, 240 and 120 value minus 120 value suppose uh, if it is uh, this is 120 degree angle here so now the from phase a to c this angle will be 240 degree going to clockwise so it will be minus 240 degree here it is minus 120 degree so this angle will change so by doing this we can also verify whether the result is coming this or not so our resultant mmf is this much so maximum value of this resultant mmf will be 3 by 2 n into i m cos omega t minus theta so here the maximum value is 3 by n i m so this maximum value means for if phase is 3 so here it will be 3 if phase is 4 here 4 will come if phase is 2 here 2 will come so like that this value changes for n phase here it will be n now i am going to draw one animation point that for 15 degree how uh, this shows a resultant mmf that rotates in air gap at a constant speed omega equal to 2 pi into a so how this is rotating it is shown through an 
animation. Angle is here changing to 15, 15, 15 degree gap it is shown here. You can visualize it how resultant MMA phase A, phase B and phase C are changing and simultaneously its resultant is also changing that is being shown through the animation in this diagram. In next slide, I will also, uh, also show one more animation how resultant uh, MMF is uh, being set up. Like you see here, in a space, how it is rotating a space vector. In a space, uh, this, uh, there are th a result, R is the resultant. Here it is shown, this R is the resultant. Phase A is shown here by this uh, color and uh, green color and blue color phase b and phase c how it is changing and this is resultant is shown in black color so this uh, very easily it can be shown that this resultant mmf is moving in a circle this at a constant path it is being traveled but the magnitude of these three phases phase a phase b uh, uh, magnitude of flux for phase A, phase B and phase C is continuously changing but its resultant MMF is not uh, changing. That is the speed at which it is rotating this black line is called the synchronous speed of the machine. This, that, from, this is uh, this direction you can see this is rotating in anti-clockwise direction anti-clockwise direction now i am going you see this is now rotating in clockwise if i change the phase sequence how can you change the phase sequence so suppose three phase supply giving a b and c you just change any phase suppose phase a you change with phase b then its sequence will be negative during this that the rotational direction will be change of the resultant MMF. Now the resultant MMF of the machine will change and even the direction of rotation of the machine also changes. Here, see, this is rotating. Resultant MMF magnitude is still constant, but it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. In the early case, it was rotating in positive. It was rotating in clockwise direction. So next part we will see in next.